Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Breaking news overnight, two people now dealing with gunshot wounds after a gun accidentally goes off near a local hotel. We'll have the latest on those two victims' conditions. The stakes are high heading into tonight's final Democratic debate showdown in Iowa. Why two normally collegial candidates are suddenly turning on one another. I'm Karina Mitchell in New York. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam. Ooh. Yuck. Blah. Blah. <laughs> That's about all I can say. That was good. <laughs> that, was that was perfect. Scientific <laughs> terms. Very descriptive, don't you that think? That's great. And very accurate. I would say. Good morning. It is Tuesday, January 14th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Max is in for Mark mm -hmm. this morning. Glad to have you here. Thanks for I getting up early. I am so honored to be here. They texted me the first quarter of the national championship last night. They're like, can you come in tomorrow morning? I could not turn down an opportunity to work with Leslie, Mark, and Marcus. The fact that he Mike. gave up watching <laughs> work the for national Mark. with yeah. Mike. Yes. Nice a lot try. of M's this Fill morning. in for Mark. Nice try. Three M's anyway. or no? Yeah. Yeah. But to give up watching that game mm. for us, we are truly honored. It was good. It was easy to fall asleep, though. And I'm going to say it to the weather. Well, oh, yeah. It was weather. It was gross. What did you say? Uh, yuck, yeah. 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 Just, yeah, just keep that saying over and over <laughs> again. And, and you'll say it tomorrow and the next day and the next day. This is what it looks like out there. Uh, I think this is by the airport. The camera's a little bit uh, out of focus, but that may be due to all the kind of this and everything else that's out there. Visibility, once again, most areas is almost down to pea soup levels. Uh, half mile at New Braunfels, quarter at the airport, just under a mile at Randolph. Hondo's a little bit better, but that's going to continue to spread. Rock Springs down to a quarter mile and and yeah, most everybody is seeing some fog and you will see some fog. It's going to continue just to kind of thicken up like it did yesterday. And just about all the area except Laredo is covered with the dense fog advisory. This was issued actually uh, last night, so it was expected obviously again. And this is in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. Today is going to be almost identical to yesterday except for temperatures. It's going to be warmer later on today. So we're starting off about uh, what five or so degrees warmer than what it was at this time yesterday. And then later on today, it's going to get very warm. Mountain Cedar did drop down and it should be staying on the lower side. So that gets I guess that's one benefit from all this kind of this sort of weather, but mold may start to go up. We'll stay steady this morning, right around 60 with fog, some drizzle around there and then cloudy. A little bit of drizzle is possible today. 75 degrees, so much warmer than yesterday. And again, this is going to be the same thing tomorrow. Same thing on Thursday. Different story Friday and some improvement by the weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Yeah. Okay. Not you, I mean the weather. So uh, okay, <laughs> sorry, Marcus. <laughs> I've been called worse. Right now, Mike, as we take a as we take a look at the roadways, uh, we do have uh, some issues out there as far as the fog. Good news though. Good news is it's not as bad as it was yesterday morning to start off your commute. So hopefully things will only improve from this point. So we can keep our fingers crossed. Right now, 35 in Brooklyn, you can see north and southbound lanes of the upper and lower decks still looking pretty good with no problems here. 1604 at John Peace. Moving over to 410 at Broadway, still have little hints of it. The difference is today the roads are much slicker than they were yesterday morning. Max. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, police say a man sent to the hospital after he was shot when a gun went off accidentally. Police say it was just before 10 o'clock last night at the La Quinta in the 6500 block of West Military Drive. Police say a man arrived at the hotel to give a couple a ride, and that's when SAPD says the man was showing off his new gun. It accidentally went off, that bullet grazing a woman in the hand, hitting a man in the hand and leg. Victim taken to the hospital in stable condition. The woman treated on the scene. Police say the owner of the gun thought the safety was on. He is now working with police. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers of San Antonio need your help to find two suspects accused of robbing a person at an area hotel. Police say back on January 7th, the suspects walked into the Grand Hyatt Hotel on East Market Street. They asked the victim to borrow a cell phone. That's when, according to police, the male suspect showed a weapon and demanded money. The two suspects ran away after a brief struggle. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get up to a $5,000 reward if the information leads to an arrest. In your morning headlines, just a day after New Jersey lawmaker Cory Booker announcing he's suspending his campaign, six Democrats set to take the debate stage today in Des Moines, Iowa, and it is the final debate before real voting begins. We are getting down to the wire. The stakes couldn't be higher as the two candidates leading in the polls feud publicly. ABC's Karina Mitchell has all the details. 
Democratic candidates Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren may agree on many things, but one thing the two apparently don't see eye to eye on is who can win the 2020 presidential election. Warren alleging the Vermont senator told her in a 2018 meeting that he didn't think a woman could win the White House. In a statement, she says, among the topics that came up was what would happen if Democrats nominated a female candidate. I thought a woman could win. He disagreed. Overnight on CNN, a Sanders senior like campaign so, uh, advisor denying the comment. Here, but clearly, Bernie Sanders did not say that a woman could not win. That clearly is uh, not uh, what he said. The friction between the two beginning days earlier after a separate report claiming the Sanders campaign circulated talking points that criticized Warren for being a candidate for the elite. I was disappointed to hear that Bernie is sending his volunteers out to trash me. Sanders not denying the report but saying it's a view he doesn't support. We have hundreds of employees. Elizabeth Warren has hundreds of employees, and people sometimes say things that they shouldn't. The one thing the two do agree on is defeating Donald Trump. The president quick to lash out at another Democratic contender, billionaire Mike Bloomberg, whose political ads criticized Trump's efforts to dismantle the Affordable Care Act, tweeting, Mini Mike Bloomberg is spending a lot of money on false advertising. I was the person who saved pre-existing conditions in your health care. Bloomberg firing back, tweeting, Glad to see you're watching our ads. I know management isn't your strong suit, so perhaps you don't know your Justice Department supports a suit that would undermine protections for pre-existing conditions. Now, heading into what should be a lively debate tonight, a new Quinnipiac poll shows health care is a key issue for Democrats. And the same national poll shows Joe Biden leading, followed by Sanders and then Warren. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And the U.S. Supreme Court taking on Bridgegate today. It was a political scandal in New Jersey that involved closures on the George Washington Bridge. So two former aides to then New Jersey Governor Chris Christie asking justices to throw out their fraud convictions and put new limits on public corruption prosecutions. Bridget Kelly and Bill Baroni found guilty in 2016 of using taxpayer money to close lanes on the GW Bridge, all as part of political retribution. The Philippines bracing for a potentially massive eruption from one of its most active volcanoes. Satellite images show the tall volcano as it has been spewing steam and ash high into the air since Sunday. Officials have recorded more than 200 earthquakes in the area. They say more activity is expected. The volcano's thick, dark ash has rained down on nearby towns, turning everything gray. Streams of lava were seen gushing out, and experts fear that, too, could spill into neighborhoods. A state of emergency has been declared in one province, and everyone living within a 17-kilometer radius of the volcano has been told to evacuate. Now, we were just looking at the, uh, the graphics right there, but the actual video, terrifying. It is so scary, and Mother Nature, nothing you can do about it. No. Well. Time now, 437, 61 degrees out. A reality star from ABC's The Bachelor sharing his story about a tough battle against a rare immune system disorder. And next, we kind of talked about it to open the show, a historic night for the LSU Tigers beating the Clemson Tigers. What? <laughs> the national championship. Go Tigers! LSU. <laughs> We're going to have the highlights next. And live cam giving us a look outside. It's going to be another messy commute this morning, everybody. Give yourself plenty of time. The roads are wet. There's thick fog in the area. It's just kind of a yucky morning. Good morning and welcome back. College football has a new reigning champion for the third time in school history. LSU finishing number one in all of college football. The LSU undefeated Tigers beating Clemson 42-25 in the national championship game last night. Once the greatest offense in LSU history. Yes, the greatest in all of the LSU Tigers history. Got rolling. It became apparent that Clemson's defense had far more to worry about than just the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, Joe Burrow. And of course, the one to call for winning receiver, Jamar Chase. Burrow, though, let's not underscore what he did. He threw five touchdowns and ran for another one, finishing off one of the most accomplished seasons in all of college football history. LSU was number one for the final eight weeks of the season, setting a record by beating seven teams ranked in the top 10 at the time of the game and finishing the season 15 and zero. All right, well, college football season has come to a close, but we are in the midst of the basketball season and the Spurs trying to fight their way back. And one of the biggest fighters, DeMar DeRozan, has been named the Western Conference Player of the Week. That comes right after his top tier performance in Toronto 
on Sunday, taking on his former team. So this marks the first time that DeMar has been named the NBA Player of the Week since joining the Spurs back in 2018. He now becomes just the fourth player in all of Spurs history to be named Player of the Week at least 10 times, joining Tim Duncan, David Robinson, and current teammate LaMarcus Aldridge. DeMar averaging 29 points, six and a half rebounds, six assists. Here's the most impressive part, though, his efficiency, 63% from the field, one of only three players in the last 35 years to score more than 20 points, three plus assists, and shooting better than 52% in 11 straight games. Not a bad list to be on. He is joining Michael Jordan and LeBron James as the only ones to accomplish that feat. So right now, the Spurs sitting at 17 and 21. Right now, they're in the ninth seed. So the playoffs started tomorrow. They'd be on the outside looking in, but we have a lot of season left. Next up, Spurs taking on Miami Heat tomorrow. Tip-off, 6.30, American Airlines Arena. And we are now seeing repercussions in the MLB. Major League Baseball coming down hard on the Houston Astros yesterday, announcing both the team general manager and the team manager suspended for at least a year. All of this after the findings of the investigation into sign stealing during the 2017 regular season and the playoffs. And if you guys remember, that included the Astros World Series championship. So the MLB says that the organization used cameras to steal signs in opposing teams and then used bats, yes, literally bats, to make noises on trash cans in the dugout. And that would signal the speeds that the pitches were being thrown at to batters. And less than an hour after the suspensions were announced, Astros team owner Jim Crane called a news conference and, well, he fired both men. You know, when I listened to the video of the trash can, mm -hmm. you can hear oh, it. Oh, yeah. It was pretty obvious. When all this came to light, if you went on social media, mm -hmm. you they like had a simultaneous camera on both the people in the infield and the, the dugout. Yeah, and it was just like, how did no one see this? They did. Mm. But too many players involved, and they've all been switched to other teams, so you can't hold the players responsible, apparently. But... Mm -hmm. Somebody got fired. Yep. All right. Onward and upward. 444, 61 degrees out. Still ahead, why some people aren't too happy with who was left out of the Oscar nominations. And next, more on a star on The Bachelor TV show who is battling a rare immune system disorder. Welcome back. It's 447. A star on the hit reality show The Bachelor is revealing his scary battle with a rare immune disorder. ABC's Kenneth Bolton has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's First Look, a GMA exclusive. JP said he wasn't feeling right. It was really bizarre. It was really bizarre. They're one of the Bachelorette's biggest success stories, Ashley and JP. JP, will you accept the last and final rose? They found love on the show, have oh, two kids, and a happy it. life. But then... Woke up the next morning and walking was hard. I couldn't... I put on socks, I couldn't get dressed, I it was couldn't really turn scary. on the shower. JP struck down by a rare medical condition. A stomach bug the week before over Thanksgiving, an illness that I had prior, the antibodies that were fighting that illness, then looked at my nerves and turned on my nerves thinking that they were a foreign body and started attacking my nerves. Doctors diagnosed it as Guillain-Barre syndrome. And coming up at 7 a.m., the couple is sharing all. Their lowest moment, his road to recovery, and their message about his rare condition. With this GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Wow, that's really cool. They give you an inside look. You know, we all deal with something. I know. It's, and when you open up, it gives hope to other people. Absolutely. It's all right. Now. Well, we just actually heard from Marcus. He's dealing with a major accident. 281. Is that what I heard you say? Two of them now. Gosh wow. darn. They're starting to come in. So we're seeing things uh, very different from yesterday. And uh, is this battery guy on right? No. No, it's blinking. No, it's powered up, but it's blinking, though. So as we take a look at the roadways right now. Do have this accident. We're moving over here, too. There we go. Can y'all hear me? Southbound, or southbound 281, right there by Grayson before you get to uh, 35. That's where we have one major accident. Second one is up here on 1604. We're looking at the westbound main lanes of 1604 as you're approaching Stone Oak Parkway. So keep that in mind. Moving over here, this is the 281 accident there. As you see, that left-hand lane is blocked, possibly two lanes until they can get it all, all cleared up. Those long turns and curves, we talked about this yesterday, those are areas where you want to start slowing down well ahead of any turns or curves. You don't want to be using applying the brake in those turns. That can cause you to lose control and then have a very bad rest of the day. 
It's just been like that steady, like misting. Yeah. Making the roads really slick. And it's enough to make it where you're going to slide right into the person in front of you if you don't give yourself plenty of room. Yep, we had all that mist throughout the day yesterday and with cloud cover and the humidity, I mean, really didn't have a chance to evaporate, so the roads are definitely damp this morning. And, you know, maybe it's a little bit better visibility in some spots, but I think conditions are almost a little worse as far as the, uh, the amount of moisture around there, and it's not going to change anytime soon. Dense fog advisory in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning for basically the entire area, with the exception of uh, Laredo. Quarter mile out there at the airport, uh, one mile Castroville, and three quarters of a mile Stinson down around Pleasanton, but of course these numbers are going to be changing all morning long as they did yesterday, and once again, most everybody has, with a couple of exceptions, has some fog, even though there's not any around Kerrville right now. Just be on the lookout for it. A lot of it around Rock Springs. Nothing that's, uh, you know, zero visibility pea soup as of yet, but that is going to be or possibly the situation. Temperatures are about five, six, seven degrees above what it was yesterday at this time. And the humidity, we've got these dew points well into the uh, upper 50s and even low 60s right now. And humidity is going to continue to be on the high side. There are a couple of showers, especially well off to the east, even a moderate uh, shower here and there. Everything's sliding up primarily to the north to northeast, and we'll see again, maybe a couple of showers here and there. I wouldn't count on it. If anything, it's going to be off to the east later on today, and that's what this uh, computer model is pretty much indicating, just those few little scattered showers here and there throughout the day. Plenty of clouds all day long, and the moisture just continues to pump on in here from the Gulf of Mexico, which is going to continue to feed the same conditions. So we'll have fog around the area, mist and drizzle tomorrow. And uh, as well as on Thursday, maybe a couple of light sprinkly showers around the area. Then we are going to have a more significant, it's not going to be a sure thing, but a more significant kind of disturbance moving on in here. And that's going to be the situation on Friday. And so that's going to improve our chances for rain on Friday. Humidity continues to go up throughout the day. So it's going to be just a sultry day and same thing into tomorrow. And then notice how there's the drier air, which is going to eventually work its way in here, but that won't be until late Friday into Saturday. And that's when we'll start to see uh, some sunshine finally, but just get used to this weather through the rest of the week. 70 at noon, cloudy, mist, some drizzle, some leftover fog around the area, and maybe a shower or two or just some uh, drizzle around here. 75 for a high temperature today. So well above normal by a good mm, 10 to 15 degrees. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Thursday. Low temperatures, mid 60s. And this is kind of, you know, we have the repetitive weather in the summer all the time. Each and every day is the same. Same repetition, but different numbers, different conditions. Cloudy, drizzly, a couple of showers. Better chance of showers and thunderstorms on Friday. Um, actually, it's looking like a pretty good chance of rain as of right now. And then Saturday, a lot more sunshine, cooler temperatures. Sunday, we'll have increasing clouds. Monday, it's going to be cool, and there's going to be a couple of showers around if you're planning on heading to the march on Monday. And it is one of the largest, oh, I think the, it is the largest, is the largest in, the, in the country. The largest march and in the country. And even if it's wet, people will still oh, yeah. show up. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Not trying to tease too much ahead. I'll be out there live covering all morning long for you guys. We are. Good. Okay. Good. We look forward to that. Very excited. 453, 61 degrees out. Still ahead, some people aren't too happy with the Oscar nominations. We'll tell you why coming up next. Good morning and welcome back. Well, Oscar nominations now public and with them comes some controversy. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Growing backlash over the Oscar nominations and the lack of people of color nominated in the acting categories. 19 of the 20 acting nominees are white, including Florence Pugh, up for Best Supporting Actress for Little Women. Moments like these show so honestly and so uh, obviously that that there is an issue and then it needs to be highlighted and there needs to be a better way of figuring this out. The only person of color nominated was Cynthia Erivo for Best Actress for the film Harriet. A supermodel may help decide the guilt or innocence of Harvey Weinstein. Gigi Hadid is one of the potential jurors in Weinstein's sexual assault case in New York. She told the judge that she's met the former media mogul but thinks she could remain impartial. She's due back for more questioning Thursday. I've been trying to get a crib so long now. A slow week on the album chart, allowing rapper Roddy Rich to climb back up to number one with his album, Please Excuse Me for Being Antisocial. It last topped the Billboard 200 album chart when it debuted near the end of December. 
And a couple of big time music stars with birthdays today. Rapper and actor LL Cool J is 52, while Foo Fighters frontman and former Nirvana drummer Dave Grohl is 51. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. A couple things there. First off, LL Cool J made that transition in acting. Really impressive. Mm -hmm. Also, love Foo Fighters. You do? Dave Grohl, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I do too. Okay. Yeah. Good observation. Happy Mr. birthdays. 457, 61 degrees out. Senate Republicans are talking about what they will do once they receive the articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And do you still have Windows 7 on some of your devices? Well, Microsoft will soon stop officially supporting it. We're going to have more on what that means for you. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The Democratic race for president heats up as candidates get ready for a big debate tonight in Iowa. San Antonio police are offering a reward if you can help them find a suspect who arrived in area convenience store. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. Not much to look at right there. How'd you describe it earlier? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think that's all encompassing in that photo. We promise the camera's working. That's just the condition outside. <laughs> Good morning. It is 5.01 this Tuesday morning. Yeah, not really pretty. It was bad yesterday, but it's bad again this morning. And there's still that mist in the air, which means the roads are wet. The roads are wet. So the question is, is this going to be a consistent thing all throughout the day? All throughout the week. Oh, good. Yeah. So just like yesterday, we were talking about how don't uh, count on seeing any sunshine really this week. Just get used to this weather. The only difference really between today and yesterday is the fact that it is going to be warmer this afternoon. It's a little bit warmer right now as well. We're at 61 degrees, which is about the normal high temperature within a couple of degrees of that. 54 uh, up the road in uh, Rock Springs and 72 down there along the coast. And the humidity dew point temperatures have continued to go up and up and up. And they're going to continue you to make that climb upward over the next couple of days. So you're definitely going to know. I mean, you notice the humidity when you step outside right now, but you definitely will over the next few days. Here's what visibility looks like around the area. Still a quarter mile out there at the airport. One mile New Braunfels, half mile Pleasanton. Hondo's not bad yet. We've got this kind of a little clear swath, if you will, up toward Kerrville. Slight bit of fog in Fredericksburg, but then it thickens up again Rock Springs and even down to the southwest off to the east. Just about everybody has some fog and just about everybody except Laredo is under the dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock and it's interesting this was issued last night about 7 30 I think it was when the uh, dense fog advisory was first issued for parts of the area so obviously this fog was definitely expected and we'll probably be doing it again tomorrow as well again temperatures are way way above normal right now mountain cedar at least did drop down from the previous day's reading mold is still low I have a Feeling though it may be going up with all this moisture hanging around here. We will finally see some changes and we also have a pretty good chance of rain as it looks right now. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo and we already got some problems out there, right? We did and officers making quick work of both of the uh, major accidents that we had. The first one was southbound 281 right around Grayson. The second one 1604 up there between Stone Oak and Blanco Road on those westbound main lanes. So those accidents have cleared up. Let's go over to Transguide. It is messy out there. Now some areas like I-10 La Cantera may not look too bad, but then you move around to some other areas like the Cloverleaf just down the road from I-10 La Cantera. There it's very slick. Take a look, I-10 and Callahan, eastbound and westbound lanes. You can see that sheen coming up off the road. You will need to reduce that speed, increase that following distance. Remember, general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute this morning. Max? Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers of San Antonio are asking for your help finding a suspect now wanted for robbing a local convenience store. So back on December 15th, police tell us a man walked into a Northside Circle K on Blanco Road, put a 12-pack of beer on the counter, then demanded money from the clerk. Police say that man, now the suspect, making gestures in his pocket as if he had a gun. The man ended up getting away with beer and some cash. So if you have any information that can help police, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible to up to $5,000 if the information you give leads to an arrest. A day after New Jersey lawmaker Cory Booker announced he is suspending his campaign, six Democrats will take the, to the debate stage in Des Moines, Iowa tonight for the final time before voting begins. Heading into what should be a lively debate tonight, a new Quinnipiac poll shows health care is a key issue for Democrats, and the same national poll shows Joe Biden leading Democrats, followed by Bernie Sanders and then Elizabeth Warren. 
And sticking with politics, Senate Republicans signaling that they will reject the idea of simply voting to dismiss the articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump. As the House prepares to send the charges to the chamber, senators still negotiating the grounds for the historic trial. Now, President Trump has suggested Republicans could just dismiss the charges, but key senators say that is not likely and they want to hear the case. The president charged with abuse of power for pushing Ukraine to investigate Democratic rival Joe Biden. The president also faces a charge of obstruction of Congress in the probe. President Donald Trump, though, says he did nothing wrong. And in Australia, a thick haze prevalent in Melbourne as smoke from the bushfires encompassed the entire city. Air quality conditions have dropped to hazardous levels and a chief health officer says that the air quality in Melbourne is currently, quote, the worst in the world. The country expected to get some much needed rain this week. Officials are hoping that this, coupled with the drop in temperatures, will help dampen the fires. Residents there, though, asked to stay indoors, close their windows to prevent symptoms like coughing and shortness of breath. Meanwhile, new developments on the San Antonio Zoo's efforts to help Australia. Alamo Draft House here at home is teaming up with the local zoo to raise money for their Australia Wildlife Fund. Buying tickets to do little bad boys for life or their horror show screening of Howling 3 can add a donation to their ticket either online or in person. Remember, the San Antonio Zoo is also matching the first $5,000 to their fund. We have more information online at ksat.com. And to follow up now to that deadly attack at the Naval Air Station in Pensacola, the U.S. now taking action, expelling 21 students from Saudi Arabia. It was just last month a Saudi student armed with a handgun went on a rampage in what authorities are now saying is an act of terrorism motivated by jihadist ideology. ABC's Serena Marshall has more from our nation's capital. 21 Saudi nationals returned to Saudi Arabia five weeks after the horrific mass shooting at the Pensacola Naval Station. Though none are connected to the December attack, authorities say they made a chilling discovery. At least 17 military trainees were found with jihadi literature and 15 with child pornography on their computers. U.S. attorneys reviewed each of the cases and decided none would face prosecution. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia determined that this material demonstrated conduct unbecoming an officer in the Royal Saudi Air Force and in the Royal Navy. It's a sensitive issue for the U.S. 15 of the 19 hijackers in the September 11th attacks were Saudis, and the Saudi pilot who fatally shot down three sailors and wounded eight others was a radical who the FBI says was secretly planning to kill his American colleagues for months. This was an act of terrorism. The evidence shows that the shooter was motivated by jihadist ideology. New evidence suggests Lieutenant Mohammed Saeed al-Shamrani was planning a large-scale massacre with more than 180 rounds of ammunition for his handgun, which had an extended magazine. The FBI has no evidence the gunman killed at the scene had help, but agents are scrambling to access his two badly damaged iPhones. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. If you look at homes or apartments on the northwest side near the Rim or La Quintera area, you probably noticed living in the area isn't exactly cheap. So in this week's leading essay, I sit down with District 8 Councilman Manny Pillai as we talk about a variety of topics. One of those topics, affordable housing in his district. So Councilman Pillai says he is now being very deliberate about looking at opportunities to create affordable housing. Now Pillai tells us. There's some people who think, no, 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 I want my North San Antonio to be as affluent as possible and let those people live in other parts of town. Well, I'm not that councilman who thinks of San Antonians as those people. Um, we're all San Antonians and we all need to take care of each other. And so this is just one of the numerous topics discussed in this week's leading essay. You're going to see many more from District 8 councilmen throughout the newscasts all throughout the week. This Sunday morning at 8, we discuss the visions for the future of the Northwest Side, the problems of domestic violence and gun violence in our city as well, panhandling, and making San Antonio more walking and biking friendly. We also asked for your questions, and you will be able to watch the entire interview on KSET.com or on our KSET streaming app. Sunday morning. And so this is only the second week and I have to give credit to Alyssa Medina mm -hmm. and Luis who did a phenomenal job putting together last week's. We worked with the mayor and we sat down. We asked 40 minutes worth of questions. Well, it, I mean, it was a great conversation mm -hmm. that you had with them and this is a good series because it really does shed light on our city and where our leaders are mentally and what, what their plans are. I love mm -hmm. it. Oh, it's amazing because we talk about all the time. The population growth in San Antonio is so huge. I know it's explosive. And it's great for our economy, but also we have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this is talking about how we get in great shape to make sure that we're ready. Yeah, because have you been on 35? 
All right, Ted, or 1604. Whew. There you go. Your time now is 509, and it's 61 degrees outside. And support for one of Microsoft's more popular operating systems is shutting down what you need to know next. And also next, a warning about how cyber attacks could greatly impact the good portion of banks in the United States. And let's take another look outside at Latvia. Man, we can actually see something this time. Oh, look at that. That's good. Not much to see, though. It is a little dreary out there. 61 degrees, but Mike Osage has your full forecast. Any uh, optimism if we're going to see the sun this week? Welcome back to Time Now 513. In your morning consumer headlines, one cyber attack. That's all it could take to have a significant impact on U.S. banking. According to a report by the New York Fed, a single attack on any of the five most active American banks could have a trickle-down effect on about 40 percent of other banking entities. The Fed predicts payment systems could be one area of concern. An attack could also cause panic among investors, which could result in financial loss to the banking industry and ultimately the economy. The report notes financial services firms are about 300 times more likely to be a target for a cyber crime than other types of business. And budget carrier Allegiant Air announcing 44 non-stop routes. That includes its first flights out of Houston, Chicago, and Boston. Allegiant adding 15 jets to its fleet last year. It plans to add more soon, so if you want a good deal to... Yeah, you're going to have to act fast. Allegiant offering introductory one-way fares online, ranging from, get this, $33 to $66 on its new routes, but travel dates are limited and you have to buy your tickets by Thursday. Oh, there's always that little catch, isn't there? <laughs> Get this. Americans are drinking less mm. wine. An industry group says the volume of wine bought across the country last year fell nearly 1%. That's the first drop in wine sales in the U.S. in 25 years. It's because it's those, what are they called? Those seltzers. Those are the new Oh, the hard now. seltzers. The hard seltzers. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the new trend among yeah. people. It's truly that's what it is. You red or white? Red. All the way. All the way, yes. Right here. A little champagne sometimes. Boom. Maybe. Always a reason to celebrate. <laughs> 515, 61 degrees out. Country music star Tim McGraw is starting up another nationwide music tour. We have details of it coming up. And if you have Windows 7 on some of your computers, you're going to need to listen up. Microsoft has an important warning for you. That's next. Hi, I'm Scott, and I love Chick-fil-A nuggets because the flavor is unparalleled. As soon as you bite into them, you're in a happy place. The seasoning is perfect. <laughs> hey, I'm Giovanni, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A nuggets is that they're perfectly breaded. There's just that right amount of crisp. I don't know what they're doing in the kitchen, but it's pure magic. Receive a free eight-count Chick-fil-A nuggets when you sign in on the Chick-fil-A app. When life changes, so do your taxes. That's a reason to switch to Jackson Hewitt. Our tax returns come with a free lifetime accuracy guarantee. Life may change. Your lifetime accuracy guarantee won't. Tax prep guaranteed at Jackson Hewitt. If your mouth is made to amaze, let Philips Sonicare give its care a raise. Get healthier gums in two weeks, guaranteed. Give it Philips Sonicare. Next level clean, next level care. There's always a way to make life better. Philips Sonicare. 518 this Tuesday morning, Windows now warning users that an older version of the operating system will stop working today. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Kimberly Brown have the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Microsoft 7 owners are on their own. The company is no longer providing help for millions of computers still running the operating system. That means no more tech support or software or security updates, leaving those PCs open to malware and viruses. And Amazon is ramping up its battle against knockoffs. The company will reportedly start sharing more information about counterfeit goods with law enforcement. After it confirms the seller is providing counterfeit goods, Amazon will shut down their account and alert police. And a Spanish company is using 3D printers to create fake steak. It has the texture and appearance of a real cut of beef, but it was made from peas, seaweed, and beetroot juice. Developers say getting the texture right was the hard part. All right, those are your tech bites. That really is nothing like the <laughs> real thing. I need the real beef. Have, have a great day. <laughs> Sorry, I love steak. Yeah, steak. Come on. You medium or rare? Medium rare. Medium rare. Mm. Medium. What do you? Oh, medium rare, depending on the cut, you fillet to rare. To rare? Ooh. Oh, yeah. It depends on where you go, too. Well, on the cut, like That's I said, true. they cut a meat, yeah. so. All right. 
Let's check in with Marcus. Marcus, how do you like your steak cooked? Don't even put it on the grill. Just put it on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> right now, as we take, Mike's looking at me like, uh, really? Right as we take a look at the roadway so far, no issues out there. We did have some accidents. Those have cleared up. However, you will have to watch out those slick conditions. Now, this is 604 Potranco, and as you can see, we do have a sheen to the roadway. That means the roadways are damp, so those gentle application of the brake and the accelerator, particularly around those long turns and curves, like you see right here, 35 at Space Center. That could really pose a problem for some folks today. Right now, I to La Cantera doesn't look too bad, but take a look, 410 at Broadway, you can see a little bit of hint of the uh, mist and the fog there, especially as those headlights reflect off that sheen down there on the roadway. 21 at Grace, and that's where we had an accident earlier this morning. All those southbound main lanes, right there where it makes that hard turn before uh, making your way to the 35 southbound exit. So folks, take your patience with you. It will take you some extra time. Hopefully, we won't have too many accidents this morning, but it's already looking worse than it did yesterday. Well, even coming in this morning, you could tell the roads were still slick. Yes. We had all that mist and drizzle yesterday. So, okay, back to the steak thing. Mm -hmm. We had a <laughs> guest on SA Live yesterday that had that made uh, ground beef patty, excuse me, what impossible were, meat. The impossible meat, okay. and then there's the other one. One's beyond, made out of, beyond meat? Yeah, one's made out of soy, one's made out of the, the peas. Mm. And um, the texture-wise, you know, as a grilled patty, mm -hmm. it was close to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you flavor it up enough, so. If you um, were to get it in a restaurant, would you be able to tell the difference if no one told you? Probably not. Really? Now, this had a lot of uh, sauces and the, the, all the add-ons to it, nice. but... Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was fairly close to it. I'm hungry. So, yeah. Now hungry. So yeah. thank you. And then uh, back to the rare medium and all that stuff. Beef carpaccio, yeah. where it's mm. the thinly shaved, very good. Oh, raw. Ooh, eat that raw. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about right? It's right on the plate. Sure. Good stuff. <laughs> Skin it. I have and friends it. who like just <laughs> serve it to me moving and just sear the side, the, yep. both sides. That's it. Mm. We're trying to avoid this topic because it is just yeah. a murky, yucky sort of a morning out there. And yeah, even though. Uh, Looks wise, it looks like visibility may be a bit better in some areas. It does seem like it is. The humidity is definitely up. We do have a lot more moisture on the roads than what we had at this time yesterday because of all that drizzle left over from uh, yesterday. And of course, dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning. Once again, this was issued late last night, by the way, and visibility has not really changed too much in the past. Uh, about half an hour, still very, very thick in and around the metropolitan area. Nothing in Hondo as a, well, a little bit in Hondo. Uh, Kerrville's doing pretty good. Rock Springs has some fog, and then even off to the east now, LaGrange, Victoria, you didn't have much yesterday, but a lot of fog out there as well. And it is going to get thicker as we progress through the rest of the morning. So just, just keep that in mind. Allow yourself some extra time this morning as you head off to work and school. Temperatures are up about five, six, seven degrees compared to yesterday. These numbers are also up the dew point temperatures and they are going to continue to go up. So not only do you feel the humidity right now, but later on today, tomorrow, as well as Thursday and Friday, a couple of showers are showing up and we did have some decent rain off to the east yesterday. And matter of fact, yesterday we picked up a whopping five hundredths of an inch of rain. We'll take it. It's not a good soaking rain, but we'll We'll take it, obviously, and there may be one or two showers around the area today, which is what computer models are indicating, just uh, sort of scattered about. We keep all the clouds around here. That moisture just continues to pump on in from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, conditions aren't going to change over the next few days. The only difference being by late in the day on Thursday, we'll start to see perhaps a little bit better chance for a couple of showers overnight and then into Friday. But as far as, like I said, the moisture and the humidity keeps uh, pumping on in here and dew points are in the upper 60s and even low 70s all the way through Thursday. Then some uh, drier air is going to try to or begin to work its way on into the area overall. And that's going to be the system which brings about the better rain chances on uh, Friday. Here's what the upper level winds look like and it's a very tranquil zonal type pattern. We are on the warmer side of things, but what this means the zonal pattern is it doesn't bring any good systems in here to give us good rain chances, except again by Friday with this wave moving on in, then that front's going to move on through here. That'll clear us out somewhat for the weekend, cool us down as well, get rid of some of the humidity. It won't last long though because there's another return of moisture and another chance of rain come Monday. 70 degrees today at noon, cloudy, some drizzle around here, some leftover fog. It's going to be pretty much identical to what yesterday was, 75 for a high temperature, although it will be warmer today, warmer and very humid. Same thing tomorrow, Thursday. It's just 
again and again and again, but then we do have the better chance of rain showers and a couple of thunderstorms on Friday. We will be clearing out somewhat Saturday. Temperatures will be down. Nice cool morning on Sunday. Clouds will increase late in the day Sunday and then again a chance for a couple of showers on Monday and kind of chilly too. We kind of been lucky on the weekends. I wish mm -hmm. it would extend through Monday. We had yeah. Unfortunately, it's it's going to be one of those maybe a shower type day. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. 525, 61 degrees out. The Oscar winning film An American in Paris is coming back to the big screen. We'll tell you when and where you can get the tickets. Good morning and happy Tuesday. We've got rhythm, we've got music. From the concert stage to downloads to the rhythm. movie theaters. See, we've this is why you're music. here. I don't sing. All you. All right, here's CNN's David Daniel with your Hollywood Minute. Old man trouble. could ask for anything more than an American in Paris back on the big screen. The Oscar-winning 1951 musical starring Gene Kelly returns to more than 700 U.S. theaters on Sunday, January 19th and Wednesday, January 22nd. Go to FathomEvents.com for details. Camila Cabello is gold, or at least her latest album, Romance, has been certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America, with the equivalent of more than 600,000 album sales. So far, Epic Records says Romance has racked up more than 770 million streams and more than 315 million video views. The year's just started, but Tim McGraw has his summer and fall all planned out. The country star is hitting the road for his 2020 Here on Earth tour, beginning July 10th in Syracuse, New York, and playing 30 North American cities through the end of September. Tour dates and ticket info at timmcgraw.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Mike's telling he, me about his... He's having a conversation yeah. with Mike. Well, Mike was talking about his own little thing. He what? got, uh, what were you talking about? The what movies. We, what was the movie called again? Father Goose. Father Goose. It's an old Cary Grant movie. There you so, go. Oh, okay. with Leslie Caron. Just Yeah. Oh, hi. Should I walk over here? Yeah, oh yeah. Just come I'm, join I'm the not, fun. I'm not familiar with Father Goose. Mm. I'm familiar with Mother Goose and, and all of the, you know, the, the nursery rhymes and stuff. <laughs> Father Goose. And, I think it's uh, a little different than and that. And Leslie Caron back from the uh, the mid 60s. She said a fun little kind of a uh, cute movie. So. Okay. Yeah. Blast from the Taking past. it on advisement. Time now 5:30, 61 degrees out. Six presidential candidates getting ready for the Democratic presidential debate today in Iowa, and we have a look at what the candidates are facing going into the debate. And for the first time since the Great Recession, women outnumbering men in the workforce. We're going to take a look at what industries seeing the most growth. Good morning and happy Tuesday, January 14th. We are running through 2020 already. I know, halfway through the month already, hard to believe. Not real pretty for your Tuesday morning as far as the weather goes, which of course is causing problems on the roadways. And the surprising thing is the fog, here's the little predicament we're in, the fog was worse yesterday. So your visibility was worse yesterday morning in your commute. However, the road surface itself is Very worse slick. this morning. So you can see better, but it's just going to be like a roller rink out there. Mm -hmm. And we've had how many accidents already? We've had two major accidents. Right now, things have kind of settled down. Excuse me, but give it about another 30 to 40 minutes before we start getting that next wave of traffic that starts hitting the roadways. And this, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, I was going to say, is there any sense of optimism that we're going to see the sun today? Uh, Saturday. Saturday, okay. Saturday, we'll see some sunshine. It's only Tuesday. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Take your yeah. vitamin D supplements. <laughs> uh, not to, to joke about it, but yeah. The fog is maybe not as thick like Marcus was saying in places, but again, yesterday we had all that drizzle mm -hmm. and it didn't get a chance to evaporate. And actually, five hundredths of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport. We're at 60 degrees right now. The humidity is up and it's going to continue to go up. We will be warmer than yesterday. That's the only difference, really. But still some drizzle around here, fog, lots of clouds. Same thing tomorrow, same thing the next day, same thing the next day. But and Saturday, the sun will come out. Although we do have a, a decent chance of rain later on in the week. So that's something that is encouraging. Yeah, this is what it looks like over there by the airport. So slightly, slightly better looking looks wise. Still quarter mile visibility. So there's still plenty of thick fog around here. Um, quarter mile, half mile averaging around the area. One at Randolph. No fog no thick fog yet at Hondo. Kerrville is doing okay for right now, but again, these numbers will definitely be changing. And then especially as we get closer to sunrise, and it's gonna stick around through the rest of the morning, 
hence the dense fog advisory, which is in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. And these numbers are way above normal by actually this is close to the normal high temperature and the humidity is extremely high. Mountain cedar did go down yesterday as compared to the previous day's reading. Mold is still low. I have a feeling with all this moisture around here that is going to be going up over the next couple of days. Like I've been saying, from yesterday, get used to this weather pattern because we're stuck with it all week long. But there is some encouragement, not only with some rain, but also a little sunshine by the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now, and you are back at the computer. Does that mean more accidents? Just double checking because you okay. know as well as I do that things can change in the blink of an eye. So right now, we're safe, and I'll keep that guaranteed for the next 90 seconds that we have no accidents out there on the roadway. Uh, surprisingly, though, 1604 and Bandera area, we're not seeing the congestion that we normally see this time of the morning. So some folks may be running a little late, but that's the opposite of what you want to do this morning. You actually want to leave a little bit earlier. Give it some extra time this morning because you will have to reduce that speed. As we take a look outside through Trans Guide, you see 21 at Grayson North and Southbound lanes still running smoothly, but these turns and curves just like this. You want to slow down well ahead of those areas. Gentle application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute this morning. Max and Leslie. Thanks, Marcus. We want to get right to late breaking news this morning. San Antonio police investigating a burglary at a firehouse subs restaurant. All of this on Southwest Military Drive. That's near South Park Mall. Katrina Weber live on the scene. So what can you tell us about what's going on out there, Katrina? <laughs> Well, this is a very active investigation. In fact, uh, I can show you right here what's going on. We have police inside. Now, if you look up above where they're standing behind the counter, you'll see that the tiles have come down. Uh, there's a big mess on the floor as well. This is uh, thanks to, well, not the, the actual delivery drivers did not do this, but they're, uh, they were very observant and noticed this as they arrived here just before 5 o'clock this morning. They knew that things were out of sort. They called police. Police are now investigating what they appear, what they believe is a break-in, that someone got in through the roof, possibly to tamper with the safe. They just went in not even a minute ago, and they're looking around to see what, if anything, was taken. They had been waiting here for the manager to show up, and so they were able to gain access, like I said, within just the... Uh, last couple of minutes, uh, but they tell us that they believe someone was after the safe and they are going to confirm that right now, trying to see again what has been taken, if anything. But they do credit a couple of observant delivery men who did notice this as they arrived here to make a delivery this morning. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a man recovering in the hospital after police say he was stabbed overnight. Police responding just after 11 last night in the 1900 block of Lennon Avenue. That's on the south side. San Antonio police telling us the man was actually trying to stop an intoxicated woman from leaving with her kids. SAPD says that woman then stabbed the man in the arm and the leg. She was detained. That man sent to University Hospital and at last check in stable condition. And in your morning headlines, six presidential candidates taking the stage tonight. CNN, Des Moines Register, Democratic presidential debate, all of which taking place in Iowa. This is the last face-to-face -face meeting of the hopefuls prior to the Hawkeye State's all-important caucuses. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Fireworks already sparking, and the six Democratic presidential candidates haven't even taken the stage yet. The controversy is between Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Disappointed to hear that Bernie is sending his volunteers out to trash me. Bernie knows me and has known me for a long time. Warren says Sanders told her in 2018 that a woman couldn't win the White House. Sanders, in a statement to CNN, calls the claim ludicrous to believe. I think that there are a certain number of people who would like to see a woman elected, and I understand that. Former Vice President Joe Biden, as a frontrunner, takes center stage at the debate. I think we represent the broadest coalition of people, not just any one segment of the party, but young, old, brown, black, people, women, men. Former South Bend, Indiana, Mayor Pete Buttigieg says it's time for a different kind of leader. The purpose of the presidency is not for the glorification of the president. It's for the unification and the empowerment of the American people. Meanwhile, businessman Tom Steyer. I think that the thing that has put me on this stage and that is the same for every single person who's running for president is message. And Senator Amy Klobuchar hoped to boost their profiles during the debate. Return to sanity. Uh, so that is, um, that is my plan. I'm John Lawrence reporting. 
The Trump administration wants the Supreme Court to lift an order blocking a change to benefits for immigrants. In October, a New York judge put an injunction on a rule that would make it harder for low-income immigrants to become legal. The administration's rule would allow people applying for a green card or visa to be judged on their income and education levels and if they use public assistance like food stamps. But opponents feared it would stop immigrants from participating in government programs that could help their families. Monday, the Solicitor General asked the nation's highest court to lift the injunction while the appeals process continues. And for the first time in seven years, the United States finds itself in a trillion dollar hole. According to the data from the Treasury Department, the government spent one trillion more dollars than it took in during 2019. That hasn't happened since 2012. And in the first quarter of 2020, we're showing similar signs. From October through December, military spending and health care costs caused the deficit to soar 12 percent over the previous year. Money brought in through taxes also going up, thanks in part to $21 billion of import tariffs. And check out this video. A school bus in California comes just inches away from being demolished by a passing train. Video shows the railroad crossing gate leaning over the top of the school bus. <clears throat> a witness says he saw the driver reverse away from the tracks as the crossing gate came down on top of the bus. One student was on the bus at the time, but no one was hurt. The district is investigating. That That's is scary stuff. Terrifying. Thank goodness no one's hurt. Yeah, no kidding. All right, time now. 541, 61 degrees out. Still ahead, more women are getting into the workforce. We'll tell you what's behind the shift. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, we are back to this beautiful shot. It is 61 degrees out there. Promise the camera is working. That is just the conditions that we are seeing here in San Antonio. Mike's going to be in in just a few minutes with your full forecast. Good morning and welcome back. Significant losses now leading to closures for Taco Cabana. 19 locations closing around Texas and here at home here in San Antonio, two restaurants are closing down. Location on Blanco Road and West Avenue closing and the second location, which is on West Highway 90 and West Military Drive also closed. The Fiesta Restaurant Group, that's a parent company for Taco Cabana, says nearly all employees impacted will be offered positions at other locations. And we have a full list of those closures around the state on our website right now, ksat.com. Meanwhile, on their Facebook, Taco Cabana created a post in honor of their co-founder, Lynn Moody, who recently passed away. Now, he operated the original Taco Cabana with his parents right here in San Antonio, that location, sitting at the corner of Hildebrand and San Pedro. I can't imagine that any Taco Cabanas are closing. Now I'm craving a Taco Cabana breakfast taco. I could always go for breakfast tacos. Okay, yeah, me too. So that means you're going to make a run? <clears throat> we'll see. <laughs> 544, about 61 degrees out. Coming up next, a new trend in the workplace. Women now outnumber men in the workforce for the first time in years. We're going to take a closer look at what industries are seeing the most growth. Welcome back. It is now 547. A major milestone for women on the jobs front. For the first time since the Great Recession, women outnumber men in the workforce. All this according to new data from the Labor Department. CNN's Meredith Wood has a closer look at the industries, seeing the most growth and why experts say this is a growing jobs trend. Women dominating the workforce. Women now hold more jobs than men. It's a minuscule yet massively interesting piece of data buried in the Labor Department's December jobs report. It found women now occupy more than 50% of non-farming positions. Experts say this trend is expected to grow as the number of working women increases while the number of men in the workforce declines. So what's behind the shift? Experts point to the economy moving away from traditional male-dominated jobs in sectors like manufacturing towards a service-based business model. The jobs report found more female-dominated industries like education and health services added 36,000 jobs. Meanwhile, jobs in the mining and manufacturing sectors lost about 21,000 jobs. Perhaps another reason for the shift. A report by Catalyst finds women are earning more degrees than men. Census figures show this is advantageous to women because having a college degree is linked to higher salaries. For Consumer Watch, I'm Meredith Wood. Wow, that's really interesting. So look out. Just happy to be here. <laughs> Just happy to be here this morning. All right, time now, 5.49 this morning. Already seeing two major accidents on the roadways, I though. know, and it's going to start getting even busier out there. Any new accidents to report, Marcus? Well, luckily, we've been very fortunate that uh, the highways themselves look pretty good. Now, I am seeing uh, something just popping up right now. Wetmore, 
at Wurzbach Parkway. Now, Wurzbach Parkway, that is a bad one for folks. Uh, so if you can avoid Wetmore, Wetmore Parkway today, that might be the best bet. Right now, 35 at Space Center. You can see traveling both directions running smoothly. 1604 John Peace almost looks like the roadways are drying out out there at 1604, but don't count on it because take a look here. 37 at Jones Avenue, north and south on lanes. Very slick out there, 281 at the quarry. So traffic is moving just a little bit slower. You will want to give it some extra time. Now, <clears throat> you'll be able to see a little bit better than you did yesterday. However, you may not have the traction that you did. So reduce that speed, increase that following distance. And like we've been repeating all morning, you want to slow down well ahead of any of those areas where you have those long turns and curves and gentle application of the brake and the accelerator, any sudden movements, could be disastrous this morning. Yes. Yeah, you know, that I-10 curve. Yeah, that's bad. Gets fine dangerous silver. out there. Mm -hmm. Not so fine silver as we like to call it. Yeah, all the roads are definitely wet because we had that uh, that constant drizzle and mist and everything yesterday. It was pretty heavy at some time. Yeah, five hundredths of an inch worth, which is not a lot. And we're not going to be seeing a, a lot of rain for the next couple of days. It's going to be this kind of nuisance stuff. Um, but at least it it is encouraging. Um, to look ahead to Friday and as far as rain chances there. So keep your fingers crossed for that. It's not going to be any sort of a big, huge overall drop breaker, but I think we've got some decent showers coming on Friday. It is just a murky sort of a morning out there. Best way to describe it. Dense fog advisory is in effect up until 10 o'clock, meaning it's going to stick around for a long time and it will get thicker at times. These numbers haven't changed much in the past about hours. The visibility of less than or a half mile in most locations in and around town. One mile at Gonzales, mile and a quarter up around New Braunfels. Then it drops back down around Austin. Rock Springs has a lot of thick fog and more is starting to show up down to the uh, southwest and even over there to the east where there wasn't a lot. It didn't have a lot on the kind of the perimeter yesterday, but almost everybody is seeing some fog or will be seeing some fog this morning. Temperatures are well, we're at our normal high right now. Low 60s. The humidity has definitely come up. This is uh, this is something that you're definitely going to notice when you step outside this morning, and it will continue to come up over the next, uh, well, couple of days and, and even through today. A few showers are showing up off to the east. Uh, mist and drizzle, there may be a couple little heavier, heavier as far as being able to be picked up on radar showers around, but uh, that's the extent of it. And, you know, one or two of them here and there throughout the day, mainly off to the east. Don't count any rain really today, anything significant at all, nor the next couple of days. But like I said, by Friday, we do have a little bit better chance for some rain. We'll probably be starting off with more fog around the area tomorrow morning, uh, Thursday morning, wouldn't doubt it as well. And then we'll start to see, especially by Thursday night, a little bit better chance for some uh, showers around here. And like I said, going into Friday. Now, there's some brutally cold air up there to the north of us, but we're not going to be seeing that anytime soon because all that's going to be staying up there to the north. We've got this almost almost right now kind of a zonal pattern. We're on the warm side of things, uh, nothing changes. We don't have any good storm systems moving on in here, but as this next front starts to work its way through and as that approaches, that's going to get the atmosphere kind of going. And so that's why we've got the chance of rain by Friday and then that'll move through. Not completely clear, but a nice day on Saturday, more clouds on Sunday and more clouds are going to lead to a chance for a few showers on Monday and some cooler temperatures on Monday. So Monday's going to be a pretty chilly day, especially if you're uh, heading out to the March. 70 at noon today, cloudy with mist and drizzle throughout the day. Again, I don't see any sunshine really in the forecast at all. 75 for high temperature today, which is about 15 degrees, 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Same thing tomorrow, Thursday. 65 starting off, 75 in the afternoon. Better chance for showers and thunderstorms on Friday. And then that front comes through here. It cools us off Saturday, Sunday, mid 50s. Clouds increase in the afternoon and just about 50 or so on Monday. It's going to be a chilly one on Monday, kind of that dampish cool on Monday. Although it's nice to see rain in the forecast because we need it. Right. I mean, this. Next couple of days, it's the nuisance kind of, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't really amount to anything, but at least we do have a better chance of rain on Friday. All right, thanks, Mike. Is it going to be substantial rain, though? In, in places, it will. Like I said, it won't be an overall drought breaker, but at least we'll have something more than just spits and drizzles. Ugh. Hate that. 554, 61 degrees out. A World War II veteran is asking for just one thing for Valentine's Day. We're going to tell you about his very special request coming up next. 
Good morning and welcome back 556 this Tuesday morning, middle of January, but Valentine's Day is just around the corner and a World War II veteran in California has just one wish. Major Bill White says he wants as many people as possible, including complete strangers, to send him a card. The reason he says the cards will be part of his long personal story, whose final chapters are still yet to be written among his many medals, the one he's most proud of, the Purple Heart. He keeps a lifetime full of memories carefully preserved on his bookshelves. And this Valentine's Day, Major White is hoping to add to his collection with cards from people near and far. So there you go. Our story, the story should be on KSAT.com. So if you're interested in sending him a card, just head there. And you can now connect to just about all of your home new smart technology. We're going to show you different ways that you can connect security systems to your entire house. That's coming up in our next hour of GMSA. And taking a look out at the roadways, we know of two accidents already this morning and traffic looks like it is just picking up. We are going to check in with our officer Marcus Trujillo and those weather conditions. Mike Ostey joins us in just a couple minutes. Right now, investigators on the scene of a burglary where they say someone tried to get into a store through the roof. We're going to hear the latest from Katrina Weber in just a few moments. We continue our new series, Leading SA, this time with a look at District 8. See what the councilman on the northwest side has in store for one of the fastest growing areas of our city. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Honestly, this is clearer than some of the other cameras that we've looked at. But still, how do you describe it? Blech. Blech. We're going to check in with Mike for, uh, for some more meteorological terms. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Tuesday. It is January 14th. Thanks for being with us this morning. And thanks to Max Massey for joining us and filling in for Mark today. Got mm -hmm. up early for us and had to miss the LSU game for us. They texted how me honored. in the first quarter and I was like, how can I turn down this opportunity? We have Leslie and of course we have Mike. And you're wearing your oh. purple tie in honor of the LSU Tigers as you are as well. Obviously. I didn't even think about it. Really? Okay. okay. No. I, I went with it, pandering a little bit. Okay, I, I was just, I don't know. I we even have the uh, meteorological terms. We do. By the way. Oh, you've got those. Stuff. Okay. The, <laughs> Champs, what? Go time. Uh, you said, eh, and it's yuck is the other meteorological mm -hmm. term to describe today because uh, looks wise or visibility wise, it's probably not quite as thick of fog as yesterday, um, but it. It's messier on the roads. We've got a lot more moisture on the roads. So a quarter mile visibility. It's improved ever so slightly around Port SA. Half mile up around Bernie, three quarters New Braunfels. That has dropped down somewhat. And we're still at half mile uh, Stinson Pleasanton. Everybody, most everybody now Kerrville. You were at 10 miles visibility. That's starting to invade there a little bit. So fog is going to continue to kind of move where it isn't and get thicker throughout the course of the next um, few hours. It'll be sticking around. As a matter of fact, once again, dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock for virtually everybody except Laredo this morning, but there's going to be some fog there as well. Temperatures are well, we're close to our normal high right now. We are about 20 degrees above normal and least mountain cedar did drop down in yesterday's reading compared to the previous day, but uh, it's going to be down for the next few days, and we do have another front moving through here by the weekend. I have a feeling mold is going to be going up. Now, as far as temperatures today, we're going to be staying. We're not going to see a huge jump in, in temperatures. We'll stay in the 60s throughout the rest of the morning, get up to about 70 at noon, and then top off at 75 later on today. Still going to have a lot of clouds, mist, and drizzle around the area. And get used to it, or stay used to it because it's going to stick around all week long. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now, and I just got another push alert on my phone, Marcus. Mm -hmm. So we have another major accident, folks. Uh, we expected this. We actually expected it to be a little bit worse with the driving conditions uh, that we have out there right now on the highway. So this is the latest one. This major accident reportedly on westbound main lanes of Wurzbach Parkway right there as you're approaching the exit for Wetmore. So watch out in that whole stretch of Wurzbach Parkway uh, from 35 all the way over to uh, Northwest Military or to Lock Hill Selma rather. It's just very uh, Lot, lots of twists and turns, ups and downs. Remember, you want to slow down well ahead of any turns or curves. General application of the brake and the accelerator throughout the morning. This is 604 Culebra Road, and as you can see, what disappears there often of, away from your view is uh, the entrance ramp to eastbound Highway 151 from, Culebra, from 1604. So that fog in some places is getting a little bit worse. Give it some extra time. Take your patience with you. Max and Leslie. 
Well, late breaking news this morning. Investigators right now are on the scene of a burglary. Katrina Weber is at a firehouse at rather a firehouse subs, which is in the 2800 block of Southwest Military Drive with the latest on what's happening. Good morning, Katrina. see what happened. Now inside there you can very uh, easily notice that the ceiling tiles are hanging down right over the counter. That is what caught the attention of a couple of delivery men as they arrived here just before five o'clock. They noticed that that was out of source. They were inside when they noticed it and then they looked around and they could see several things obviously missing. They tell me that there was an iPad uh, that is usually behind the counter that was no longer there as well as a computer toward the back office that was missing. They got out, they called police, and this is where we are now with officers inside. Uh, you can see the manager in there or an employee pointing out uh, something to police, showing them what happened. Uh, from what we understand, there were cameras that caught it all. According to these delivery men, they say that they were told that the whole burglary was caught on camera. It looks like someone got in through the roof and came down through those ceiling tiles. And that person apparently got scared off. If you can notice, there's a buzz, there's a noise right now. That's the sound of the delivery truck, and that apparently is what scared away those burglars as uh, these delivery men arrived here this morning. Burglars got scared and ran off, and then that is when the, the delivery men came and called the police. So they're trying to get a, a, a big picture, I guess, on exactly what all is missing, but police did tell me it looks like they also may have tried to get into the safe. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a man is in the hospital after being shot in the hand and leg. Police say a man pulled up to a couple at the La Quinta in the 6500 block of Military Drive. They say he was showing off a gun to a couple that he was offering a ride to, and that's when they say it accidentally discharged, hit the couple. The woman was treated on the scene. She was injured in her hand, and the man is at University Hospital, but he is expected to recover. Well, this morning, San Antonio police asking for your help solving multiple robbery cases. The first happened at Home Depot in the 2600 block of Southwest Military Drive. They say these two people walked into the store back on January 2nd. Both took power tools and other expensive items from the counter and then tried walking out. When a store employee tried to stop them, one of the suspects punched him in the face, knocking out the employee's tooth. They both then drove off in a black SUV. And police also looking for a man who robbed a woman in a downtown hotel. All of this happening at the Hyatt Hotel on Market Street back on January 7th. They say a woman asked a man to borrow a cell phone. That's when he pulled out a weapon and demanded money from her before he ran away. And a man took a 12-pack of beer from Circle K. Police say it was in the store in the 6500 block of Blanco back on December 15th. They say he had a hand in his pocket. He acted like he had a weapon before walking out and running away. With any of these cases, if you have information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Any information that leads to an arrest could get you $5,000. Well, if you look at homes or apartments on the northwest side near the Rim or La Quintera area, you've probably noticed living in the area isn't exactly cheap. So in this week's leading essay, I sit down with District 8 City Councilman Manny Pelias. We talk about a variety of topics. One of those topics, affordable housing in his district. Councilman Pelias says that he was now being very deliberate about looking at opportunities to create affordable housing. Now Pelias tells us his office is being very intentional about making sure the projects that are being put together have affordability in mind. <laughs> There's some people who think, no, 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 I want my North San Antonio to be as affluent as possible and let those people live in other parts of town. Well, I'm not that councilman who thinks of San Antonians as those people. Um, we're all San Antonians and we all need to take care of each other. This is just one of the numerous topics discussed in this week's leading SA. You're going to see many more topics from District 8 Councilman Manny Plyas throughout the newscast throughout the week. This Sunday morning at 8, we discuss the visions for the future of the Northwest Side, the problems of domestic violence and gun violence in our city, panhandling, and making San Antonio more walking and biking friendly. We also ask for your questions. You'll be able to watch the entire interview on KSAT.com and our KSAT streaming app Sunday morning. And campaign trail, it is debate day. Six Democratic candidates for president gathering on the same stage it's tonight. It's a big day because it's the last debate before the first round of votes are cast. CNN's Camilla Bernal has more. The first Democratic debate of the year. In Iowa. Especially in Iowa. In the first state to decide. Hello, 
Mason City. The state has a good track record in predicting the Democratic nominee, and the candidates know it. They will all try to make their case to Iowans and the nation as to why they can beat Donald Trump. Eight years of Donald Trump will change the character of this country. Former Vice President Joe Biden and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders will stand at center stage. Our campaign is about, you know, winning here in Iowa, winning the Democratic nomination. Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts will be to the left of Biden. We need someone every Democrat can get behind. And former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg will be to the right of Sanders. And now I know that it's decision time. Businessman Tom Steyer and Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota at the ends of the stage, but both fighting to stand out. I'm not kidding. I love this so much. You know when the Super Bowl is? Yeah. It's the night before the Iowa caucuses. <laughs> all six qualifying candidates likely giving their all on Tuesday and all hoping to win Iowa, making the debate even more crucial. In Des Moines, I'm Camila Bernal reporting. And as we said before the debate for the Democratic presidential candidate scheduled for this evening, there are a few ways that you can watch it tonight. Now, since the debate is hosted by CNN and the Des Moines Register, both outlets streaming it for free. You can watch it live on DesMoinesRegister.com or CNN.com or if you have any of the CNN apps. And be sure to tune in tomorrow for all of the important moments from the debate. We'll also have the latest information on KSAT.com. And staying in politics. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is set to meet with House Democrats today, and they are set to discuss how to proceed in the impeachment of President Donald Trump. Pelosi could announce who will serve as impeachment managers as early as later this morning. Now, managers essentially acting as prosecutors in the Senate trial. A vote to approve the managers and send the articles of impeachment to the Senate could also take place tomorrow. So Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he plans to move quickly on a trial once he receives the articles from the House. Well, the Trump administration wants the Supreme Court to lift an order blocking a change to benefits for immigrants. A New York judge put an injunction on a rule that would make it harder for low-income immigrants to become legal. This was back in October. The administration's rule would allow people applying for a green card or visa to be judged on their income and education levels and if they use public assistance like food stamps. But opponents feared it would stop immigrants from participating in government programs that could help their families. And time now, 6-11, 61 degrees out. You have Microsoft 7 on your computer. You might want to upgrade. The company is no longer going to support the older software. And if you have any questions about our Broken Blue special and how it involves the police department, we want you to ask them. We plan to answer them in a special web segment set for tomorrow. And live cam giving us a look outside. This tells the whole story. It's kind of messy out there. It's a lot of fog and a lot of mist and drizzle. Please be careful. Good morning and welcome back. 6.15 this Tuesday morning. So if you missed our Broken Blue special, you can watch it right now in its entirety on KSAT.com. And if you have any questions about the special, we want to answer them. Tomorrow, Dylan Collier will answer your questions during an SAQ live stream on KSAT.com. It will start at 11 o'clock in the morning. And if you want to submit a question, just head to our website. Just search Broken Blue. Click on the link, submit the question about officer discipline and the arbitration process. And this afternoon, KSAT wants to answer any questions you may have about the 2020 census. The census is a big focus for the city of San Antonio, and it's at the top of this year's agenda. To hear the mayor and other local leaders, leaders rather, talk about their plans and the importance of the census, be sure to head to KSAT.com and search census. And then later, join Erica Hernandez, 3 o'clock this afternoon. She goes over the importance of the census with a Census Bureau representative. That's going to be live streamed here KSAT.com. Once again, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Really happy they're doing this because I talked to the mayor last week about mm -hmm. the census. Very enthusiastic. He said it's one of his top priorities this year. And one of the most basic foundations, the fact that we need to be counted if we want anything to get done locally and federally. We want funds from the federal government. We have to have an accurate count of who is in our city. And part of that, roadways. Speaking of roadways, yep. how are they looking out there? Yeah. Marcus? Well, not too bad. Not too good either. Uh, we did good news is we just uh, cleared up an accident uh, 35 at AT&T Center Parkway. So uh, that's good news. Uh, not so good news. We're still having some other issues. Uh, we've got uh, this accident up here, Wurzbach Parkway, 
up there by Wetmore. So that accident still in the clearing stages. And then take a look at this shot here, 410 at Cherry Ridge. We have a stalled vehicle there on that left hand shoulder. So that's not a good place to be. It's also on a curve. So hopefully no one uh, strikes that vehicle there. So kind of in a bad spot. Hopefully we can get a tow truck out there and get that vehicle moved just as quickly as possible and keep everyone safe. Remember, reduce your speed this morning. Give it some extra time. The roads are slick. Not the best conditions for traveling this morning, but got to go to work, got to go to school. Not much choice. It's true. Roadways looking a lot more busy now than they were about a half hour ago. Yes. Oof. And I was just looking at that picture and thinking, don't let that kind of fool you. Even though it looks a little bit better, that, mm -hmm. that one trans guide shot. It just kind of depends where you're at. Right. there Because we still have a lot of fog. We're still going to see a lot of fog for the next couple of hours. And the roads are wet. Yeah. And there's a lot more wet than what they were uh, yesterday. Here's out at the airport. And uh, yeah, we can make out some of the lights a little bit better, a, a better view than what it was yesterday. But uh, we still have the uh, the dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning. And visibility is, I mean, still being reported at a quarter mile out at the airport, half mile Stinson, and just over a mile, about a mile and two thirds over there at Port SA. But we are starting to see a little bit more fog around Hondo. It has thickened up around New Braunfels in the past uh, about hour or so. Rock Springs has some down in the south. Everybody, most everybody, with just a couple of exceptions, uh, Eagle Pass, and well, that's about the only one not seeing any fog right now. And looks it will get thicker in the next couple of hours. A couple of showers are showing up well off to the east. There may be a shower or two primarily to the east later on today, but it's not very likely at all. Temperatures, uh, to put it in perspective, this is closer to the normal high than the normal low. We're almost 20 degrees above normal right now. And of course, these uh, numbers, the humidity is continuing to come up. Dew points have actually gone up a little bit in the past couple of hours, and they will continue to go up throughout today, tomorrow, Thursday, even Friday. Then we'll see a, somewhat of a break in the humidity, but it's going to be getting, it's kind of sultry. You step outside right now and it's going to be getting even more sultry going into the next couple of days. Computer model has, again, a few scattered showers, maybe off to the east later on today. Clouds stick around here. We're not going to see really any sunshine in abundance until probably about Saturday. We'll start off tomorrow. Looks like a lot like this morning. Some mist, drizzle, some fog around the area uh, Thursday as well. And then once we get into Friday, that's going to be our better chance for some rain. Now we do have some really cold air up to the north, but that is pretty much going to be sticking up to the north. We've got basically a zonal pattern right now. Everything's moving straight west to east in the upper level winds, and that means no good storm systems to really squeeze out a lot of rains. That's why it's just this sort of nuisance mist and drizzle around here, and that chunk of really cold air stays up there to the north. We will start to see some minor fluctuations and other trough is developing off there to the west. That's going to help with the uh, humidity increase by Friday. And then as that front moves through and as it approaches, that's when the atmosphere is going to start to get a little more churned up. And that's why we got the better chance of rain. Actually, it's kind of encouraging right now as far as rain chances on Friday. This front will come through, get rid of uh, the moisture on Saturday, and it's going to give us a lot more sunshine on Saturday. Clouds will increase then on Sunday. And that's going to lead to maybe a couple of more showers around here on Monday and temperatures are going to looks like kind of be on a steady decline going from Saturday in through Sunday and Monday. So it's going to be pretty chilly. It looks like damp and chilly on Monday 70 at noon cloudy with some uh, drizzle around here throughout the day 75 for a high temperature today. So we will be warmer than yesterday and that trend is going to continue the next few days 65 starting off tomorrow and every the rest of the mornings this week 75 for high temperatures a decent chance for showers and some thunderstorms some locally you know good rain and then we do clear out cool down by saturday it's going to be breezy on saturday and only 50 on monday wow big change mm -hmm. thanks marcus had a good line he said we're only four tomorrows away from seeing the sun <laughs> that's accurate <laughs> <laughs> 621, 61 degrees. <laughs> Most of us love a good steak, and we know steak as being beef. Well, a Spanish company made a steak with different ingredients. Hmm. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. I wanted more from my COPD medicine. That's why I've got the power of one, two, three medicines with Trelegy, the only FDA-approved once daily three-in-one COPD treatment. Trelegy, the power of one, two, three. Trelegy, one, two, three. Trelegy. Trelegy and
and the power of one, two, three, I'm breathing better. Trelogy works three ways to open airways, keep them open, and reduce inflammation for 24 hours of better breathing. Trelogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Trelogy is not for asthma. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trelogy more than prescribed. Trelogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Think your COPD medicine is doing enough? Maybe you should think again. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trelogy and the power of 123. Trelogy, 123. Save at Trelogy.com. In this morning's first look, a GMA exclusive. JP said he wasn't feeling right. It was really bizarre. It was really bizarre. They're one of the Bachelorette's <laughs> biggest success stories, Ashley and JP. JP, will you accept the last and final rose? They found love on the show, have oh, two kids and a one. happy life. But then... Woke up the next morning and walking was hard. I couldn't I put on socks. Or no, I couldn't get dressed. I it was couldn't really turn scary. on the shower. JP struck down by a rare medical condition. A stomach bug the week before over Thanksgiving. An illness that I had prior, the antibodies that were fighting that illness, then looked at my nerves and turned on my nerves, thinking that they were a foreign body and started attacking my nerves. Doctors diagnosed it as Guillain-Barre syndrome. And coming up at 7 a.m., the couple is sharing all. Their lowest moment, his road to recovery, and their message about his rare condition. With this GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And some big tech news for you this morning. Microsoft 7 owners now on their own. The company no longer providing help for millions of computers still running on the operating system. That means no more tech support or software or even security updates, leaving those with Microsoft 7 on their PCs open to malware and even viruses. A Spanish company is using 3D printers to create fake steak. It has the texture and appearance of a real cut of beef, but it was made from peas, seaweed, and beetroot juice. Developers say getting the texture right was the hard part. Would you try it? Nope. <laughs> not, even, not even a second. Yeah. Just absolutely I'm sticking not. with the real thing. I uh, can't blame you. Mm -hmm. 626, 61 degrees out. Almost said 21. That would be very cold. I talk to people in the Northeast all the time. Is that what it is? Yeah. No, it's not even close to that here. Well, home connectivity is easier than it's ever been before, but when it comes to concerns for home security, we'll show you how you can keep yourself and your loved ones safe while being connected. Hmm. And let's take a look at those roads right now. It is misty out there, a little foggy to start your Tuesday morning. We're going to check in with Officer Trujillo and Mike Rosehage, see what your conditions are going to look like for your morning commute and the rest of the week. We'll be right back. A burglar causes a whole lot of trouble at the Southside restaurant. Police say he came in through the roof caused a mess and took off with some property. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you all about it. The stakes are high heading into tonight's final Democratic debate showdown in Iowa. Why two normally collegial candidates are suddenly turning on one another. I'm Karina Mitchell in New York. Details coming up. We had great play calls, great, great coaching staff. I mean, this was this was a long time coming. This kind of speechless right now. This was fun. Heisman winner and national champion, the LSU Tigers, the top team in college football this year, winning the national championship. We are going to see highlights. We're going to hear from more of the LSU star quarterback, presumptive number one pick, Joe Burrow. Yeah, Heisman Trophy winner and now national champion. He's got to be. He's got to be. We, as we take a look outside with live cam, this is what you're going to face as you head out this morning, everybody. Allow yourself plenty of extra time. Take your patience and be careful. <sighs> That's yeah. gross. It's gross it's out not there. Not pretty out there for sure. But great news for LSU Tigers. So proud yes. of those guys. Do you want to hold up your sign? Yeah, let's do it. Boom. Woohoo! Proud of those Tigers. And Ooh. conveniently, I wonder we're the, purple. I, I wonder if the Lions could get him in the draft. No. Yeah, yeah no. Keep wow. going. He's probably going to Bengals. <laughs> Bengals have number one. I can't imagine he's gonna he's gonna fall any Sorry, further buddy. than that. Sorry, Sorry. Mike. Yeah. Um, a lot of accidents this morning. Uh, we haven't had as many as we probably should have uh, had this morning due to the slick conditions out there. Now, the biggest difference between yesterday morning and this morning, yesterday morning, very bad visibility. But the traction wasn't too bad. This morning is the exact opposite. You can actually see a little bit better, a little bit further down the roadway. However, very, very slick on the road. So all those turns and curves, those elevated ramps, you really want to slow down ahead of any of those areas this morning. All right, so the question remains, is that going to clear up anytime soon? Nope. Uh, all week long. 
basically. And what was it you said? We got four more tomorrow until tomorrows. we get to uh, tomorrow Just mornings until we get to some sunshine by the, the weekend. But we are starting off with temperatures of almost 20 degrees above normal. We're right around low 60s. It's warmer than what it was yesterday. Some fog around there that mist and drizzle 75 for high temperature. So it's going to be very warm today and the humidity is going to continue to go up. It's going to be a sultry kind of a day today and that's going to repeat then tomorrow as well as Thursday Friday. It's encouraging a couple different things not only to see some sunshine by the weekend but we do have a decent chance for some rain coming around here on Friday. Now obviously the camera is a little bit out of focus but at least we can see these lights this morning unlike uh, yesterday. Visibility is still a quarter mile at the airport. It has dropped down somewhat around Stinson Pleasanton and New Braunfels is now down to a quarter mile visibility. So in some places it is getting a little bit thicker. It's not bad there around Port SA and elsewhere. Uh, yeah, most everybody has some fog except for Eagle Pass. We're starting to see a little bit in Kerrville as well, and we will continue to see this fog thicken up and get a little bit more widespread throughout the course of the morning. Dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning for basically everybody except down there uh, south on 35 and temperatures like I said about 20 degrees above normal. This is roughly the normal high temperature this time of year. At least Mountain Cedar yesterday's reading did go down substantially from the previous day's numbers. Uh, mold was still low. I have a feeling that's going to be really shooting up there. And then Mountain Cedar is probably going to get another uh, good jolt those trees by Saturday because it is going to be breezy on Saturday. But again, at least we will see some sunshine. Details on the weekend in just a couple of minutes. <coughs> time saver traffic right now and Another accident? Well, that's the accident at Wetmore, okay. but uh, what we're looking at right now, Mike, is we're not seeing the delays on eastbound 1604 uh, between Braun headed back or towards I-10 1604 like we should. So either a lot of folks left really, really early or a lot of folks are running really, really late this morning. This accident still in the clearing stages. Major accident, uh, Wetmore, Par uh, Warsbach Parkway right at Wetmore. So be advised uh, that will slow some folks down. Take a look at the uh, Transguide camera, 604 at Old Hausman. Now, in some areas, visibility is a little bit better. Others, it's a little bit worse. But in all cases, the roads are slick. So give it some extra time this morning. Reduce that speed. Watch that following distance. Mark and Leslie. Thanks, Mark. It's not a late breaking news. We've been following all morning for you. San Antonio police say a couple of delivery drivers were right on time. It seems they stopped a burglary in progress at the Firehouse Sub Shop. That's on the south side. So our Katrina Weber is live in the 2800 block of Southwest Military. You say it was an unusual way that the burglars got in that actually caught their attention. That's right. Those delivery drivers told me they noticed it right away. And you could see it pretty clearly through the window. Those ceiling tiles hanging down. Now, police tell, tell me that there is a corresponding hole in the roof. They believe that's how the burglars got in, came right in through the roof into this restaurant. Uh, they got called here a little bit before 5 o'clock. Now, just in the last few minutes, a lot has happened. Those police who were investigating, they've left the scene. So have the delivery drivers. The delivery drivers say that they uh, believe they may have scared off whoever was inside this restaurant. They got inside. They noticed that there was a computer missing as well as an iPad. They called police. Police got here right away, but those burglars were long gone. They have spent some time, or they did spend some time inside here, uh, taking different uh, fingerprints and, and other evidence, and also talking with the employees who are now inside cleaning up, uh, just to get a, a figure on exactly what was taken. They say it also looks like the burglars may have tried to get into the safe, but were unsuccessful, and that may be because of the arrival of those delivery drivers who scared them off. Again, we have employees here uh, now cleaning up. Looks like they're trying to put things back together. Police trying to put this whole case together and figure out exactly who broke in here this morning. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, to the campaign trail, a day after New Jersey lawmaker Cory Booker announced that he is suspending his campaign, six Democrats will take to the stage in Des Moines, Iowa tonight for the final time before real voting begins. The stakes couldn't be higher as the two candidates leading in the polls feud publicly. ABC's Karina Mitchell has details. Democratic candidates Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren may agree on many things, but one thing the two apparently don't see eye to eye on is who can win the 2020 presidential election. Warren alleging the Vermont senator told her in a 2018 meeting that he didn't think a woman could win the White House. 
In a statement, she says among the topics that came up was what would happen if Democrats nominated a female candidate. I thought a woman could win. He disagreed. Overnight on CNN, a Sanders senior campaign advisor denying the comment. But clearly, Bernie Sanders did not say that a woman could not win. That clearly is uh, not uh, what he said. The friction between the two beginning days earlier after a separate report claiming the Sanders campaign circulated talking points that criticized Warren for being a candidate for the elite. I was disappointed to hear that Bernie is sending his volunteers out to trash me. Sanders not denying the report but saying it's a view he doesn't support. We have hundreds of employees. Elizabeth Warren has hundreds of employees and people sometimes say things that they shouldn't. The one thing the two do agree on is defeating Donald Trump. The president quick to lash out at another Democratic contender, billionaire Mike Bloomberg, whose political ads criticized Trump's efforts to dismantle the Affordable Care Act, tweeting. Mini Mike Bloomberg is spending a lot of money on false advertising. I was the person who saved pre-existing conditions in your health care. Bloomberg firing back, tweeting, Glad to see you're watching our ads. I know management isn't your strong suit, so perhaps you don't know your Justice Department supports a suit that would undermine protections for pre-existing conditions. Now, heading into what should be a lively debate tonight, a new Quinnipiac poll shows health care is a key issue for Democrats. And the same national poll shows Joe Biden leading, followed by Sanders and then Warren. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, Visa has now spent over $5 billion to buy up Plaid, a financial tech company. Now, some of its software is used by other companies like Venmo and the cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase. So according to Visa, one out of every four people with a bank account in the United States uses technology that was actually developed by Plaid. Well, part of the new trade deal set to be signed tomorrow by the U.S. and China includes promises by China to buy more American cars, planes and energy. Reuters says that over the next two years, China will also boost its spending on American services. And Sears holding the estate of the once giant retailer left in bankruptcy has agreed to settle a lawsuit over new owner purchase of one of the company's best stores. Now, Sears sold its best assets to Lampert's hedge fund last year. Now, the old Sears says it was owned, it was owed millions of dollars and has settled the suit for $18 million. Americans are drinking less wine. An industry group says the volume of wine bought across the country last year fell nearly 1%. That's the first drop in wine sales in the U.S. in 25 years. We were talking earlier, I, I kind of accredit some of that to these hard seltzers mm -hmm. that are now the new popular thing. Like the Trulies and stuff like that? Yeah. I'm not, I don't drink them very much, but I know a lot of people do. Not my cup of tea or no. cup of wine. Or cup of wine. We like mm -hmm. red wine. We like red wine. 639, 61 degrees. I think it's healthier for you. It is. It's less sweet. Yeah. It's got some good stuff in it. Technology is expanding fast and now you can connect just about all of your home to new smart tech. We're going to show you different ways you can connect security systems to your entire house. Welcome back. It is now 643. Well, whether you're looking to play music in the kitchen or turn on your sprinklers while you're away from home, smart home technology offers something for everyone. In this morning's Angie's List report, how security systems have expanded to cover all aspects of your house. You probably know that your security system can monitor your alarms and your locks, but now home automation can be tied into a single network controlled all by your security interface. You can automate many features of your home for as little as it costs to go out to dinner. All you need is your smartphone and Wi-Fi. There's so much more that I can do from my phone than I ever thought I would be able to do from my phone. With the press of a single button on her phone, Lisa Delaney can activate specific features or an entire wave of actions the minute she leaves her house. My favorite feature is that when I leave the house in the morning to go to work, I can press one button. It makes sure all the lights are turned off, all the doors are locked, and that my alarm is on all at once. But smartphones are getting literally smarter as well. Today's thermostat will even be able to detect what temperature you'd like it set at automatically. Nowadays, I mean, you can do lighting control, garage door control, door lock control, you know, thermostat control, all these different types of stuff through your security system. Experts say a good automation installer customizes their design to the homeowner's wants and the homeowner's needs. And you don't have to own a million dollar home for this level of integration. An automation system and monitoring costs less than you might expect. You can get a smart security system for just a few hundred dollars and you can monitor cameras and alarms on your smartphone and always know what's going on at your home. 
When it comes to home automation, you may need to upgrade with your home Wi-Fi. Full automation includes dozens of devices, and not all Wi-Fi is capable of handling that much traffic. Max? Well, it is time to talk sports, and it is a big day in the world of sports. LSU, the new reigning national champions, taking down the Clemson Tigers last night in the national championship game, winning big 42-25. Clemson starting off strong, going up by 10 points in the first half, looking for the team's 30th win in a row. Yeah, they've been on a pretty good run, but LSU finds their groove. They showed off the best offense in the country. That's not hyperbolic. Literally the best team on offense in the country. Joe Burrow, Heisman winner, leading the team six total touchdowns. Clemson, no answer. The former third-string quarterback at Ohio State making his case for one of the greatest college seasons ever, voted the offensive MVP of the national title game, and the hopes are high. Feels good. I don't know what I don't know what else to say. I mean, there's there's been so many people that have come into this from people that have helped me along my journey from Ohio, Louisiana, everywhere. And we couldn't have done it with a better group of guys. Not not just football players, but great, great men that I, I just feel blessed to, to be a part of this. Now, some are calling Burroughs' season the greatest ever by a college quarterback. He is expected to be the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. And why wouldn't he be Heisman winner, national champion, Overall, great guy. Yeah, very talented. Very talented. And I'm super excited for the Tigers. Let the Lions The LSU get. Tigers. The LSU Tigers. <laughs> very we knew the Tigers yeah. were going to win. And it, me, yeah, we didn't know which ones. I knew that it was going to be LSU. And Dom, who's one of my trainers for boxing, mm -hmm. he bet me. Ooh. He was for Clemson. I was for LSU. Whoever lost, they have to do 100 squats. So, Dom, prepare to do your squats. <laughs> All right, time to check in the roadways. How's it looking out there? <clears throat> well, a lot better than it's going to look for Dom and later on today, I'll tell you that right now as we take a look at the roadways, uh, still looking pretty good. Now, the previous accidents that we did have out there on the highways have cleared up. Now, we are starting to finally see some of that congestion on those eastbound main lanes of 1604, headed back over towards that I-10-1604 interchange from the Braun and Bandera area from uh, Holotus. Now, let's take a look at Transguide. This is 1604 and Hausman along that stretch. You can see slow-moving traffic on the access road and on the main lanes. Now, we do have fog and we do have slick conditions as far as the road service themselves. Now, 35 at 410 up on the northeast side. Folks also moving just a little bit slower, not only up on the highways, but look down below on those uh, connector ramps. And that's what you want to do, folks. Slow down well ahead of any of those areas. 281 over there by the quarry, you can see that nice sheen to the roadway. So <clears throat> the dampness is upon us. And as we take a look at uh, some various areas, here's a great example of a long curve there. You want to slow down well ahead of those areas. No application of the brake in these turns or curves, any sudden movement of the uh, brake, the accelerator, or that steering wheel could prove disastrous this morning. And we can see that fog right there. It is and it actually looked a little bit clearer about 10 minutes ago. So in some places, it's getting a little bit worse. Other places, it's not changing at all. Yeah. Overall, it's not as pea soup as what it was yesterday, but it's still, yeah. it's murky out there. And as we've been talking about, there's a lot more moisture on the road this morning. So just here's what you're going to be facing when you uh, step outside and take to the roads. It's just one of those kind of mornings, and it's going to be the same thing tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And finally, we'll see some sunshine by about Saturday. Dense fog advisory remains in effect up until uh, 10 o'clock this morning. A couple of uh, counties down here out of the Corpus Christi office have been taken out of this, but still for all of our area, basically it's under the dense fog advisory. Bernie now, uh, I spoke a little too soon. It is now down to zero visibility. So the pea soup up there in Bernie, uh, quarter mile at the airport. Same thing, New Braunfels, half mile Pleasanton. Uh, Uvalde now also pea soup fog half mile in LaGrange. So in places, yes, it is starting to get thicker and it will continue to get thicker in the next couple of hours. A couple of little sprinkly showers maybe in Wilson County. Otherwise, it's mist and drizzle. And then these few showers well off to the east. We are almost 20 degrees above normal. We are about what our normal high temperature is right now. The humidity 
With dew points, of course, you get to 60, you start to notice the humidity, and then these dew point numbers are going to continue to go up throughout the day and the next couple of days. So you will definitely feel humidity. It's going to be a sultry afternoon today. Computer model has a couple of sprinkly showers off to the east, clouds all day long. We'll do the same thing tomorrow morning. We will keep a couple of showers around throughout the day, and we'll do the same thing again on Thursday morning. Maybe a little bit better chance for a couple of sprinkles on Thursday, and then Thursday night into Friday. That's when and, and during the day on Friday, we have our better chance for some rain. Really cold air up to the north, but that's staying up to the north because we've got this almost zonal air pattern in the upper level winds, which keeps all that cold stuff up there. Also doesn't give you any really good rain chances either. We just got this moisture sitting around here, but there's nothing to squeeze it out. However, with that trough developing out there to the west, as that approaches and gets near on Friday, that then increases our rain chances. Then that'll move through and that's going to give us some sunshine and cooler temperatures and temperatures look like they're going to be making kind of a steady downhill decline through Monday. So it's going to be much cooler on Monday. 70 at noon today. Cloudy, some mist, drizzle, some leftover fog is possible too. 75 for a high temperature today. So about uh, 10 or so degrees above normal tomorrow. Same thing. Thursday, same thing. Friday, better chance for some showers and thunderstorms. It's encouraging right now as far as rain chances on uh, Friday. Been saying that all morning. And then some sunshine on Saturday, increasing clouds Sunday. A couple of showers Monday, along with temperatures only at 50 on Monday. Wow, that's such a big difference. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Mike. All right, 651, 61 degrees now. Suicide rates are increasing across the country. Join us tomorrow on GMSA to see how those who survive and their family members are getting help and resources they need. And Mike described it perfectly. Taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Whew. Whew. Frankly said, it <laughs> Nicely is. Nicely said, Max. Yeah, it is gross out there to start the day. <laughs> I got nothing else but that. That's good, degrees. that's accurate. <laughs> Hope you're at back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, violent protests erupting in Iran. Police reportedly firing bullets and tear gas at protesters upset at the regime after they admitted that they exec accidentally shot down the passenger plane. We are live with the latest there right here on GMA. Wow. Let's find out how the roadways are looking. Potential for lots of problems this morning. That's right, Leslie. Take a look. I-10-1604, and just like yesterday, you can see the upper deck of 1604 as it goes over I-10. But take a look uh, down there below what looks like a little uh, pond or a little lake underneath the highway there. That's how much fog there is, and that's the reflection of the light from the uh, parking ride underneath 1604 at I-10. Mike? Notice how the roads are very slippery out there and there's still plenty of fog around and in some places it has gotten much, much thicker. Bernie uh, going up I-10, zero visibility right now. Still quarter mile out at the airport. Randolph, uh, New Braunfels, Uvalde has zero visibility. The dense fog advisory is still in effect for the next uh, few hours up until 10 o'clock this morning and mist and drizzle, warm temperatures. We're going to be up into the mid 70s later on today. A lot of humidity. Same thing the next few days and a better chance of rain Friday. We'll have some sunshine Saturday. All right. Thank you, Mike. And thank you so much for spending your morning with us. And thank you for coming in early. Thank you for having me. It's fun. Don't worry. I'll be back here at 9 a.m. Be careful, everybody.